It's really a partnership. I really believe in these folks and the folks who operate the business. Uh, our, our sales are up this year. We're doing very well, and I think Clean Team is a big part of that. Our father and mother started this business, and, uh, and they were all about people. I see the same thing with the lawn. They're all about people. It's not always just about uh, uh, the dollar. Consumer confidence today, even though it's been increasing, as you can see, more or less steadily coming out of the trough, it still remains below where it was prior to the recession. And now keep in mind, the recession ended in the middle part of 2009, so we have three years beyond the trough and consumer confidence has still not been restored. Now, one of the reasons the consumers remain a, li a, little, um, a little scarred and why they remain a little nervous, what's happening with the government? What's interesting to note here is that consumer confidence, this graphic shows the consumer sentiment index from the University of Michigan. It shows it two different ways. The top line here is sentiment of current economic conditions. The bottom line is what folks expect of their financial position in the coming six months. And what's interesting to note on this graphic is the damage that this indecision in Washington, D.C. can do to consumer psyche. This is the middle part, this is the financial panic. Now take a look over here. This is the summer of 2011 when Congress first threatened to, to um, default on our debt obligations when this S&P downgraded the U.S.'s long-term debt outlook. We actually saw, this is interesting, we actually saw this fall to levels that were lower than what we saw at the height of the financial panic. So in essence, what the government was doing scared the heck out of consumers more than what financial markets were doing in 2008. That's pretty remarkable when you think about it. That, along with slow wage growth, is going to continue to constrain household spending as we move forward. But as I mentioned earlier, one of the, one of the factors that is now contributing to stronger household consumption is going to be the recovery in those asset values. So from the value of some folks' homes are increasing. Um, values in equity markets now at, at uh, record highs, at least for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. There might be some wealth effect from that. It's not going to throw us back into the 5.5% consumption growth range that we saw during those earlier recoveries, but it may help on the margins as we move into 2014. The expectations are for something between 2 and 2.5% right now for 2014 with this kind of modest but steady job creation and very, very little price inflation, at least in the near term. Pad one, uh, you know, there's a little bit of growth there coming mostly out of the liquids associated with the Utica and the Marcellus. But uh, pad five, the West Coast, including Alaska, there's nothing but decline in our view for uh, compound annual growth. So it's, uh, it's an interesting th thing to think about if your customers are on either coast, all the crude is coming out of the middle part of the country and or the Gulf Coast. And so that has impact upon the downstream. You know, taken as a whole, North America could, could definitely make a lot more uh, gains in lowering its imports. In other words, we could get closer to crude oil energy independence as a continent. I don't think it's rational or advisable or even preferable to, to think that we could totally wall ourselves off from the international uh, crude markets, including Canada. So I think that, you know, I think that we will definitely make some gains, but I don't, I don't believe we'll see 100% of our own crude being run in 100% of our own refineries.